ladies and gentlemen, Colgate Dental Cream presents the Dennis Day Show, written by Frank Galen, with Paula Winslow, Dink Trout, John Brown, Charles Dant in the orchestra, yours truly, Vern Smith, and starring our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Twice a day and before every date, use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. In answer to many requests, here's Dennis with a famous old Scotch song, The Wig Wag Wiggle of the Kilt. I'll never forget the day I went and joined the 93rd. The chums I used to run with said they thought I looked absurd. They saluted me and gandered me in a ring. And as they wagged me tar to kill, they all began to sing. He's a bra-bra, heel and laddie, private jock McKay. There's not another soldier like him in the Scotch Brigade. Reared among the heather, you can see he's Scottish built. By the wig, wig, wiggle, waggle, wiggle of the kill. Talk, I am telling you, there's nothing like the skill of the bagpipes and the wiggle of the kill. Talk, I I'll never forget the day we were ordered on review. The king came down to see us and the queen was we in two. As I marched by the royal coach, the king just shook his head. The queen put on her royal specs and looked at me and said, Heal the bro, bro, Highland Daddy, Private Jock Brigade. For there's not another soldier like him in the Scotch Brigade. Red among the heather, oh, you can see his Scottish bills by the wig. Wig, wiggle, waggle, wiggle out of the gills. Oh, dear, dear, he's too utterly, 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 utterly. He's a bra, bra, heel and laddie for I've a jump game. There's not another soldier like him in the Scotch Brigade. Rare among the heather, you can see his Scottish bills. By the wig, wig, wiggle, wiggle, oh, waggle, oh, the cute. By the wig, wag, wig, wag. A wiggle, they waggle, wiggle, oh, the cute. Hoot, man! Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning your teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly, brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate Dental Cream is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And use Colgate Dental Cream twice a day and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Some months ago, when it first became apparent that our young hero Dennis Day and Mildred Anderson were serious about each other, his landlady, Mrs. Anderson, felt that Dennis wasn't good enough for her daughter. That opinion of Mrs. Anderson's has been altered somewhat by time. She now feels he isn't good enough for anyone's daughter. (laughs) Mrs. Anderson has never been a woman of patience, and this morning she finally ran out of the little she had. So, without further ado, she summoned her cuter half to her side. Herbert? Yes, Angel Eyes. I've decided this ridiculous romance between our daughter and that day boy has gone far enough. We're going to put a stop to it. But, oopsie, they're crazy about each other. Why, just the way we were at their age. They're infatuated and nothing more. Well, haven't you noticed the way he looks at her? Just like I used to look at you. With love and respect and desire and fear. (laughs) I've heard enough, Herbert. 
You're going to Dennis today and tell him he must give Mildred up. Oh, Popsy, I just can't. It's too cruel. Oh, nothing. Well, now, suppose someone had broken up our marriage. What would I have today? No ties of any kind. Out every night in the week with a different... A different... Well, uh, maybe you're right. I'll talk to the boy. <laughs> My boy? Yes, sir. I have a message for you from headquarters. What does she say? <laughs> it has been decided that when Mildred gets married, she must be supported in the style to which she is accustomed. Gee, that's well. We'll be very happy to live here. <laughs> afraid you don't understand, my boy. Mrs. Anderson doesn't want you and Mildred to see each other anymore. Not see each other anymore? No. But Mildred and I want to get married and have a home of our own and three or four children. It wouldn't be easy under those conditions. <laughs> uh, I know, but you see, my wife feels that you're not making enough money at present. Enough money for what? Well, name it and you're not making enough. <laughs> well, it's true that I use the simplified form for my income tax. <laughs> It is indeed. Gosh, you know, I, I, I hate to see you and Mildred break up, son, but you're making only $8 a week, and, well, uh, Yeah, I know. You've asked Mr. Willoughby for a raise down at the drugstore, I suppose. Sure, lots of times. He gets very upset. His eyes pop out and he starts to shake. Oh, that isn't good for him. It isn't good for me either. I'm what he shakes. <laughs> When I was contemplating marriage, my boss let me invest in his business. You mean he let you come in as a partner? Yes. Unfortunately, the deal turned out very badly financially, but Pupsy married me anyway. Gee, you got it coming and going, didn't you? <laughs> well, nevertheless, I feel that a partnership in the drugstore is the only solution, Dennis. Now, suppose you sound out Mr. Willoughby today on putting $100 into his business. Suppose he sounds me out on what hundred dollars? <laughs> well, let's worry about that after you speak to Mr. Willoughby. You've got to try it, son. After all, you and Mildred have been going together for seven months. You don't want to end up going together for seven years, do you? Gosh, no. We might forget what we started out for. <laughs> I'll talk to Mr. Willoughby this morning. <laughs> I've been thinking. On company time, use your lunch hour for that kind of nonsense. <laughs> but, Mr. Willoughby, this is important. What would you say if I told you I wanted to invest some money in your business? Some money? Uh-huh. My boy! My dear, dear boy! Here, have a cigar. Oh, thank you, sir. How much money? Five thousand? Three thousand? Two thousand? A thousand? You're going in the right direction, but not fast enough. <laughs> well, how much do you want to invest? A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Here, have a cigar. <laughs> Thank you. Back to work, my boy. Well, it was worth a try. I thought I could get my pay and a share of the profits instead of drawing a salary. Hey, and wait a be... minute. Instead of drawing a salary? Yes, sir. Son, this is the time to invest in a sound business. Things are booming today like never before in history. Really? Why, yesterday I heard you tell a customer business was never worse. Yeah, well, you've got to expect little fluctuations from day to day. Oh. I'll tell you what I'll do, Dennis. For a hundred dollars, I'll give you three percent of this drugstore's net profit. Oh, boy, what'll that come to? Well, if business picks up a little, nearly seven dollars a week. Mr. Willoughby, I don't consider this a great step forward. Well, Dennis, you don't want to be a wage slave all your life, do you? I didn't, but it's beginning to look better to me now. <laughs> but a partnership doesn't mean only money, son. It means prestige. Can I ever say to you again, Dennis, sweep out this door? No, sir. No. From now on, it'll have to be, partner, sweep out this door. <laughs> yes, sir, that's true. Of course. I'll go back to my office right now and draw up a paper covering the whole thing. See you later, dear partner. 
Gee, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. Every once in a great while, I don't. But for $100, I ought to be getting more than... Oh, Dennis. Oh, hello, Mildred. Daddy told me you were going to talk to Mr. Willoughby about a partnership. Did you? Yeah. He's inside now, drawing it up. Oh, Dennis, how wonderful. At last you've taken your first step in the business world. And who knows where it'll end? It can't go far. Seven more steps and I'll starve to death. Well, what do you mean? Well, it turns out that partners get less money than wage slaves. But, Dennis, you can't back out now. It's an investment in your future. Don't you want to prove to people that you're a man? Well, I think I ought to let them rely on circumstantial evidence. (laughs) But don't you realize this partnership is our only chance? Mother won't let us see each other again if you don't take it. But I don't even know where to get the hundred dollars. Well, you could try the bank. They lend money to anybody who is considered a good risk, or even a fair risk. Yeah, but I'm classified as foolhardy. (laughs) You're nothing of the kind. Go down to the bank and see Mr. Courtney personally, and tell him you want a loan. Well, okay, I'll go, but I have a terrible premonition... A horrible feeling that somehow this is going to lead to another of my normal days. So you wish to arrange a loan, Mr. Day? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Now, as two businessmen, let's talk about your collateral. Okay, but we're liable to lose one of our businessmen. Come, come. You must have some sort of security, Mr. Day. Do you own a car, a house, some sort of property? No, sir. Anything of value at all? I have a Boy Scout knife. (laughs) That's hardly adequate. However, we might possibly base the loan on your weekly earnings. Better take the Boy Scout knife. (laughs) I see. Well, Mr. Day, do you think you could write the bank a note? Oh, yes, sir. Is it its birthday or something? I mean a promissory note. Oh, one of those. Yes, one of those. What are they? <laughs> Mr. Day, I'm a very busy man. Suppose you leave your name and address, and if we don't get in touch with you very soon, it won't surprise me. <laughs> but, Mr. Courtney, really, we... Please, Mr. Day, come in someday when I haven't quite so many personal troubles on my mind. But not today. Oh, yes, sir. I guess you mean about your daughter and that French count. I read about it in the paper. Yes, my daughter thinks she's in love with him. My own daughter losing her head over a pony like that. Do you know him? No, sir, not personally. But I see him in the hardware store every once in a while buying stuff for his hair. Stuff for his hair in a hardware store? He uses Johnson's glow coat. <laughs> yes, he would. Mr. Courtney, I don't get many good ideas, but I think I've thought of one. Now, you'd give a lot to see that romance broken up, wouldn't you? Anything in this world. Anything. Anything I ever had or hoped to have. Would you give $150? $110 is my top offer. (laughs) Well, what have you got in mind? Well, suppose another foreign nobleman was to come along, say, a a Spanish duke, and win your daughter away from this French count. But then I'd be just as bad off as I am now. Not if the Spanish duke was me, and after I got her, I dropped her like a hot potato. By George! Day you have brains. It does sound like it today, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, it's a great idea, my boy. A wealthy Spanish nobleman. Just perfect for a little gold digger like my daughter. I won't fail you, sir. Oh, I'm certain of it, son. Here, here's $110 in cash. Spend what you have to and keep the rest. Gosh, what a roll. Wow. Gee, Andrew Jackson. I always wondered whose picture was on a $20 bill. Yes? Hi, Senorita Courtney. Permit me myself to introduce. I am... Oh, of course. My father told me you were going to call on me. You're His Highness, the Duke Ricardo Alvarez y Velasquez y Ramon de los Trujillo. Am I pronouncing it right? If you are not, who is going to? <laughs> well, do come in, Your Highness. Or may I call you by your first name? Oh, see, si. Pick out anyone you like. <laughs> oh, Ricardo, you're making fun of me. You keep thinking that, no matter what anybody says. <laughs> you're cute. And Daddy tells me you're just enormously wealthy. Oh, see, si, see, si. I am lorded. <laughs> 
tell when I saw the lovely bouquet you sent. A great many pesos went into it. I told the girl only roses and gardenias. She must have put them in by mistake. <laughs> Ricardo, you silly boy. You're making fun of me again. It was only a question of time. Oh, I think you're just adorable. Did, um, did my father happen to mention to you anything about me being, uh, engaged? Oh, see, to a man, I think he said. <laughs> yes, but I think we can forget about him. You're so much nicer and richer. Oh, see, I am the white sheep of my family. <laughs> yes, isn't it wonderful? And you know, Ricardo, since I've been going out with the Count, Dad's cut off my allowance. Uh -huh. There are any number of little things I'd love. That is, if you... Oh, say no more about it. We'll go down to the five and ten and run amok. Right up to ten dollars. <laughs> oh, Ricardo, you're adorable. <laughs> That's the best joke yet. <laughs> this time I hoped I had missed... <laughs> There's a cutest little shop in Middletown. You especially will just adore it. We'll drive over. But, senorita, really, I don't think oh, we should... Oh, don't be silly. I don't object to your generosity in the least. That's the prerogative of royalty. Uh, she. Huh? Of Come on, now. You can tell me all about your subjects in Spain as we walk to the car. My subjects? Yes. What are they like? Oh, the same as here. History, chemistry, algebra. <laughs> Ricardo, you darling. <laughs> The shop I was telling you about. Look at the sign. Senora Carmen Fernandez of Madrid. Genuine Spanish laces and... Miss Courtney, I don't like this place. I think it's run by foreigners. Yes. Of course. You can talk to the senora in her native tongue. This I am inclined to doubt. <laughs> oh, silly. Come on. Senora Carmen, look what I brought you. A countryman of yours. A real duke. I am glad for to meet you, senora. But for the sake of the young lady, don't you think we should speak only English? You're so right. <laughs> now, I wouldn't dream of talking Spanish. <laughs> now, don't mind me at all. You two have a nice chat in your native language. Really? We don't want to. <laughs> I absolutely insist on it. Well, you better go first, Duke. Uh, 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 Menagua, Nicaragua, La Paloma, que duma, senora. Uh, San Luis Obispo de los uh, Xavier Cougar, Tijuana. <laughs> oh, si, si. My... What a beautiful liquid tongue Spanish is. See, Senora Carmen and I understand each other, I think. <laughs> I'll say. Now let's get back to English. Uh, would you like to see some merchandise, dearie? Yes, there are. <laughs> Could use. Oh, I got some lovely things in, dearie. Uh, look, isn't this a gorgeous negligee? Oh, it is. May I have it, Ricardo? Uh, the Duke is going to pay for it? Oh, yes. Yeah. This gives me pause. <laughs> cash or check, Duke? Well, uh, how much is it? One twenty-five. Oh, cash, of course. What's a dollar and a quarter to me? I got millions. <laughs> The price of the negligee happens to be $125. Huh? Wrap it up, senora. Give her the money, Ricardo. But I... 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 <laughs> Give it to her, Ricardo. But all I have here is 110 I'm sure Oh, well, that'll do fine. Thanks. And I'll deliver it tonight. Oh, thank you, darling. And I'll have her deliver it to you so you can give it to me tonight in person. Dennis? Sure, but I... Ooh. Oh, silly, I knew you all along. You're Dennis Day, the soda clerk in Willoughby's drugstore. You pretended to be a Spanish nobleman to meet me because you're in love with me. Me? Oh, no, you're wrong, Miss Courtney. You're making a revolting development positively repulsive. <laughs> don't try to hide it, Dennis. I knew when you bought that expensive negligee for me. I think you're the sweetest boy I've ever met. 
I'll never let you go again. Ever. Well, Dennis, my boy, I guess there's only one thing for you to do. Drop dead. <laughs> Coming over here tonight? Yeah, Mildred. And she said she'll never let go of me. Oh, we've got to think of something. And fast. Women. That's the trouble with this world. There's too many of them. If a person isn't a man, he's got to be a woman. There ought to be a third choice. <laughs> Wait a minute. Women. Suppose you convinced her that you couldn't be true to her. That you're a regular devil with the women. Isn't there some idea that's less fantastic? <laughs> You can do it, Dennis, don't you see? I'll come to the door with a, a telegram or something, and you pretend I'm a stranger and make violent love to me. When she sees how fickle you are, she'll never speak to you again. Well, I'll try it, Mildred. And if it doesn't work, drop down to the bank and see me sometime. I'll be the third vice president from the left. <laughs> Yes, darling. There's something I feel you should know. I could never be true to you. I believe in polygamy. What? Yeah, strictly the gay life for me. Night after night. Nightclubs, parties, drinking champagne out of lady slippers. First removing the ladies, of course. <laughs> you mean you're girl crazy? Yeah, I wouldn't be good for you, child. I'm just an old tea bag in the cup of romance. <laughs> I've been dunked too often. <laughs> Nonsense. Honest. I fall in love with every woman I meet. I just... Watch. This will prove it. Wait till you see what happens to me when I see this girl. Come in. Ah, my dream girl. Stand there. Just let me look at you. Don't move from that spot. So who's moving? <laughs> oh, it's you. I thought... I mean... Dream girl, I'm mad about you. I can't live without you. I can't. Force yourself. <laughs> Don't you understand? I'm mad about you. Look, here's your negligee and stay off this stuff, will you? It'll knock your brains out. <laughs> see what happens to me, Miss Courtney? And with every girl I see. But you saw Senora Carmen this afternoon and nothing happened. I know. It's at night that the beast walks. Oh. There's another girl. Probably a telegram or something. But it'll happen again. You'll see. Come in. My dream girl, stand there. Just let me look at you. Don't move from that spot. Dennis Day, have you gone crazy? No, ma'am. I love you madly. Here's my arms, dreamboat. Make port. What? Don't try to fight it, kid. Kid? Come on, let's pitch woo. Bet I can pitch it faster than you can catch it. I've heard enough, Dennis Day. I never want to see you again. Come here, young man. Wait. Mrs. Anderson, please. Telegram for Dennis Day. Mr. Day will be busy for a few minutes. Shove it under the door. Now, wait a minute. You stay where you are, and I'll shove Mr. Day under the door. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, please. Wait, that's my good nose here for you. Wait. Dennis Day will be back in just a moment with a song. But first, here's a fact worth knowing. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And that's important, as our Colgate players are going to demonstrate for you. Our Colgate curtain goes up on a girl and a boy. The boy is having trouble, and he doesn't like it. Doggone it, honey. How come you treat me like you do? You get me thinking things are solid with us, and then you quick freeze me like I was a raspberry. Well, don't blame me. It's your own fault, Jim. Then why not tell me what it is? Come on, honey child, name it. Uh-uh, not me. On account of it's just too grim. But your dentist would name it, and he'd tell you what to do, Jim. And here's what Jim found out. Scientific tests have proved that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, Colgate Dental Cream's safe polishing agent brings out the natural sparkle of your teeth. 
cleans them thoroughly and safely. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. In fact, nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate Dental Cream is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So, to clean your teeth thoroughly and safely, for a wake-up flavor everyone enjoys, use Colgate Dental Cream. Remember, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. With Charles Dant and his orchestra, here's Dennis to sing his latest RCA Victor recording, Mamzelle. Jack Benny every Sunday, and be sure to be with us again next week for another Dennis Day program. More songs, more adventures in the life of our star, Dennis Day. Meanwhile, be sure to use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Lovely Joan Bennett is another famous Hollywood star to rave over cashmere bouquet, bow cake, the new cake makeup sensation. Joan Bennett says, I'm wild over cashmere bouquet, bow cake. So clever, so practical, with the makeup sponge in its own moisture-proof compartment right in the compact. Yes, cashmere bouquet, bow cake, for the first time, brings the makeup sponge right inside the case. Buy the new cake makeup sensation, cashmere bouquet, bow cake, at cosmetic counters today. Housewives know only too well how every penny counts these days, and here's an easy way to add more to your shopping budget. Dealers are now paying higher prices for used fats than ever before, so save used cooking fats and oils, turn them in for cash. Remember, too, industry urgently needs fats and oils to help produce soap, automobiles, refrigerators, all the things you want and need. What's more, the shortage of fats and oils is a worldwide problem. So for your own good, use and reuse fats and oils as often as you can. When they're no longer usable, save them in tin cans and turn them into your dealer. This is 
NBC, the national broadcasting company.